Somebody else started to get, and I thought, I, am I not Matt and Matt? It's two, three of them. Um, uh, I think I'm ready to have a baby. Um, not right now, I just, that's not how it works. Um, <laughs> Not financially either, I'm very uh, poor, but I am, um, I'm ready to give up doing stuff with my evenings and weekends, that's cool. <laughs> uh, quite broody. Uh, it's very weird, I think uh, you mentioned toxic masculinity earlier, and I don't know, like I think of myself as like above that, I'm pretty, um, pretty arrogant, which is actually quite toxic. Um, <laughs> I definitely think I'm better than every man. <laughs> I feel like I'm what everyone aspires to be. Um, no. Um, but yeah, so pretty incredible. But um, I. Not a joke. Um, she's pretty great. But uh, I. Um, there are a few kind of toxic masculinity kind of things that, that I, I just, you know, I just reject. Uh, men can't cry. I love crying. I look forward to crying. <laughs> I'm in. I've got one on the way home. Um, <laughs> let's wrap this up. Um, can't wait. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, there's. I think there's a kind of thing. You know, occasionally I'll notice something about toxic masculinity that just doesn't. You know, that I that I do do, and I, and I think it's a bit weird. Uh, so I realised only this week that I, I'm very shy. <laughs> uh, it's the other Martin. Um, <laughs> uh, the less good Martin. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I noticed uh, this week, uh, one of my toxic masculinity traits is I don't feel like I admit that I'm broody enough. I feel a bit embarrassed by how much I would like to have a baby. Um, which is a bit weird, maybe. Uh, but like, when people bring their children to, to work, like if like, you know, pre-COVID and somebody would have a baby and they'd wheel it in and I'd have to pretend I didn't care. Um, <laughs> like, do you want to hold it? Like, with, with a one arm, maybe. Which <laughs> <laughs> is quite weird because I am, um, like I'm really quite, quite dedicated to having a baby. I do, I bought a baby grow. Um, it was a Beyonce themed baby grow. <laughs> so I had like seven years of it. Just yeah. waiting for the day. <laughs> I'm going to have my little baby. <laughs> um, I thought someone was delivering a baby. <laughs> uh, I won one. But somebody very uh, uh, This is my baby. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, yeah, I really want to have a baby. Um, uh, and actually, I used to have. Well, I'm also single, which does. I think maybe it makes it harder to adopt. I haven't looked into it much. <laughs> <laughs> I am single, uh, but I had a boyfriend, um, an ex-boyfriend now, and he um, he always said he didn't really want kids, so it wasn't going to work out. Um, but he always used to say, and this is a toxic, not our toxic masculinity thing, because he would say he didn't want them. But I remember once we were on a plane, we were going on holiday, um, maybe that's an unnecessary detail, maybe you don't need to know that. <laughs> I'm, I hardly travel for business. <laughs> um, we were on a plane, and he was like waving, uh, he was playing peekaboo with a little baby. It was absolutely adorable. Um, and I was like, you already, and actually it just, um, it woke something in my womb. Um, <laughs> and it's just so funny, isn't it? Because like men um, worry about maybe going to the gym or, uh, I don't know, earning some money to get a, you know, to get, a, find a partner to, to seem attractive and actually just babysit. Like that's really fucking hot. <laughs> if you're gonna get a man just, and have a, have a baby latched on. <laughs> Just me. Um, <laughs> uh, this boyfriend, uh, things were pretty doomed. To be fair, um, I met. I remember the first time I met his parents. And I, I had the feeling his mum was a bit homophobic. Um, uh, and actually, I mean, homophobicness, homophobia, uh, is kind of born from ignorance, isn't it? It's, you, know, you don't know enough about gay people. And I remember um, <laughs> he said, "Oh, let's see. I'll give you the tour. I went to their house. I'll give you the tour." She went, "Don't go upstairs." <laughs> <laughs> And because she doesn't know gay people, she doesn't know that I would have done whatever I was going to do upstairs in the living room happily. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't wearing any bottoms. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Home favor is wrong. Um, I'm glad to have educated you all a little bit, a little bit more. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, 
Um, so there we go. It was actually quite weird. Uh, this is maybe a bit much, I don't know. Um, so um, this same boyfriend, he was quite funny about certain topics. We had quite a big argument once because um, my friend, a bit of backstory, I had a friend and well, I still have quite a lot of friends, I'm quite popular. Um, <laughs> she had this like, uh, like, uh, icebreaker, and actually it's quite good, feel free to use it. Uh, she kind of meet new people or, or you know, meet me up for it. And she'd say, hey, if you had to go down on your mum or your dad, who would it be? <laughs> you have to. They've gone to your head. They'll all die. Gun to your head. Who are you going to pick? Uh, and obviously, most of you have the same answer. You, you pick your mum because your relationship will survive that. <laughs> um, unless, unless it relies on them arriving, and then you pick her down. Um, <laughs> That's a laugh of recognition. <laughs> uh, and he was obviously quite sensitive about it, very weird. We had another really big argument because I asked if his mum was uh, at menopausal. Uh, not because it doesn't matter, be menopausal, but you know, that's. Uh, but I was just curious if I like to <laughs> write these things down. Uh, and uh, I had a really big argument about it. So she was a bit homophobic to me, and then I went to the loo to kind of calm myself down, finish myself off from the living room. <laughs> He was like, you know, and I saw in the bin there was a, a tampon wrapper, um, <laughs> tampon, and, um, and um, she, uh, and so I, was, I, I, so I texted my mum immediately and said, "Oh, she still bleeds." <laughs> It doesn't matter, you know, like, it doesn't matter if you're bleeding or not. Um, but I just knew that it would annoy him so much that my mum knew. Um, and, well. and I had started a WhatsApp group. <laughs> she still bleeds. Um, and I was thinking about it. Like, actually, we were together for a couple of years, and then we broke up a couple of years ago. And, and I never really got my chance to really point out to him, I know your mum still bleeds. Um, <laughs> such a shame, because I just think, like... I would have got a lot out of that. So I, uh, I thought about texting him the other day. But actually, out of context, it makes it seem like I've got a problem with periods. And I don't at all. Um, I quite, again, I try, try track her. I'm pointing at my, my flatmate, and I, I track hers quite a lot. Um, I'll be growing, she'll be due on at the way home. So, um, sorry. Um, but I do have a really long period. Um, and it's okay, I obviously I don't have periods, but I do... Um, when I'm doing my bikini on and I just nick a bit. Um, <laughs> and that, that's, I get that rush of, of a period when I see another droplets on the... That's took a turn, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't do it on purpose, but I don't, like, disenjoy when it happens. Um, so anyway, give me a baby. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>